I want you to take extreme ownership, but also of what you guys plan and then lose the expectations as a man in control, not out of control. And understand, like we talked about a moment ago, goals can change, ideas can change, visions can change. <clears throat> no, that's good. I, I read the assessment earlier in the day and I was laughing at what I answered at the beginning of December <clears throat> to what I'm doing now. And it was like, damn, I'm okay. Yeah, you really, uh, okay. I do learn a lot, but I finally, uh, I'm about three quarters way through the No More Mr. Nice Guy. And um, obviously, a lot of your program, especially in manpower, like it relates back to that whole book. A lot of the exercises he does. So that's been interesting because I had an incident, you know, I've been telling you about like, and I'm on the last couple of calls about like telling my wife what to do, like what I want her to do, kind of in a nice way. Like when I said, yeah, skirt, you know, do that. And we went out. So yeah, I love we that. had Sunday, nothing going on. I wanted to go play golf. Long story short, she came out wearing this outfit and it blew me away. And I was, and I didn't like try to validate her. So I was like, I mean, you definitely don't look like a mom with that. And, um, Going throughout the day, I was doing stuff around the house, and she just came up and gave me this huge hug. And I just was trying to, I didn't say anything. I kept, I just fell into that for a few minutes and then didn't make a move. She started to, you know, initiate a little bit of stuff. And there's a little mental block there right now for her. And she was in tears. She was like, I just, I'm doing this to you, or I don't know why. And I, and I didn't respond. I didn't try to fix it. Good. I asked some questions. And then I just, I smiled at her. I gave her a, a pick her up and I was like, I'm gonna love you through it. I was like, I'm right here and let it be. You know, and I've really been practicing that short, not puking, yeah, I don't know, just a different idea. And it was tough because I had these feelings like I wanted to do more, but I kept thinking of how you gut punched me the other day. And I was like, all right, all right, what would Cass do here? And I, it it really worked. We went and played pup pup with my daughter and we did like, just, I felt like that, like you said, you know, this program, like man in control. I, someday I felt that all day and it was a good feeling. And it's not perfect yet, but it's, it damn sure is better than where it was in fucking October. This is amazing, man. So there's a couple really big highlights here that I want to address. That last part of some great stuff. So if you guys haven't figured it out, like, uh, I can't remember who it was, somebody, maybe it was Greg. Uh, yeah, it was Greg, Dead Bedroom Fix, you're into that book right now. If you guys notice, there's so many books that I reference, some courses, some coaches, but mostly books. And there's a reason for that because a lot of the coaching I didn't particularly like or love, but there's so much, there's so many wonderful resources out there. You're right, no one's your nice guy. So I'm one of Glover's certified coaches and I've integrated it through my system, tying it to a bunch of other stuff. We do some of the exercises, mostly it's in manic control, right? Um, those are specific from his breaking free. And if you want those guys there, I mean, you can Google it, but in the resources tab under Lords, you can see those exercises are there. They're really, really powerful. What I'm getting at is one of the things that you should be thinking about as you go through the reset, second, third, fourth time, whatever, is what else do I want to learn more on? What else do I want to get better on? There's so much more that I can offer you and show you too. It's just, I think that there's enough distractions with alternate excuse me, directions that you could go from already within with what I share with you. So nice guys, clear that I want you guys to take care of that one pretty quick, right? But something like Dead Bedroom Fix, you don't necessarily need to because I've covered it. And, and in fact, most programs that are out there that I would say are more like glorified dating advice, they're actually like 90% the Dead Bedroom Fix. Like you, you're, you're literally wasting your time, right? Because we're going to cover that and we're going to go deeper. We're going to go further. Like, it's not, I'm not saying it wasn't a great resource. It's awesome. I, I love some of the lines in that book. Who's not muted? Is that you? Oh, maybe that's you, Lance. Um, it's all good. Oh, sorry. No, it's all good. Um, and so just remember, you're going through the reset and I put it together step by step, pulling from all these resources. And then a lot of the stuff that I had to come up with or that Catherine and I came up with or stuff that we've learned since working with so many couples, men like you. And so don't get overly distracted, but definitely pay attention because as you go through the reset, you're gonna to wanna to do more. Second thing, Lance, awesome job reflecting. The day after, you called it the gut punch, I think as well back then. And here you are still going, still reflecting, and then implementing. This is phenomenal. This is especially because Catherine and I are gonna do a podcast right away, and I just wrote a, uh, a post that's gonna go out later today um, that's on this whole you can't control your wife business, right? And it's, it stems from what really is, first you need to be able to control you, right? 
And the, in that video that I posted, now it's called why, why You Will Fail. It's before you even start to reset. I put that video in for you guys. I put it out on January 1st on YouTube. And it's something you guys should all watch several times unless you have this mentality that Lance did. Uh, Bill, I keep picking on you for the same thing, but I'm going to do it again because it's such an easy example, right? Don, super insecure, always saying and throwing in his face that there's something going on. Who are you cheating with? You obviously want to talk to the girl and we're not using the module for three months where we're like, hey, Bill, I want you to use Man of Play because she's going to feel loved, valued, respected, seen and heard. She's going to feel like your woman. She's going to know that you're her man, right? And then we're going to focus on some polarity stuff that's going to pull her to it and enjoy all that. And so that would obviously make insecurity easier when we invite her to join us when she's having problems with this. Or... You could be like Lance, where we're not dealing with this three months later. You take the gut punch, you jump in, and you get going. This is wonderful. I love it. And there was one other thing that I wanted to highlight that he brought up. And that was, he said, babe, I'm right here. I just want to love you through it. And he had a smile on his face. I assume he said the same thing to his wife with a smile. That's okay to say to your wife. That promotes safety. I'm here to, so some, you know, we always talk about not talking about the reset and stuff like that. But there are certain things that will make it easier for her to understand why things are different. That's one of them. So well done, Lance. I didn't talk to you about that. You just picked up on it. So well done. It's really, really great. So I cannot stress safety and peace in your home enough. And um, I guess that's the last thing that I'll tell you, Lance, is don't worry. You will get to share your feelings. Remember, when we're creating safety and peace, the goal is so that she can trust you. She feels safe and gets to her natural, loving, empathetic state first. Right, The moment we start getting into our feelings, even if you're not puking, even if you're using the formula, right? Indisputed fact, and then the I feel statement, it's still, if we're not there yet with her, she's gonna wanna attack, more than likely, or at least defend herself, which doesn't get us anywhere. And so great job, just be patient, hang in there. Partnership right. means lots okay. of conversation, <clears throat> lots of talking. I'll you know? say this, one night, I had been showing my feelings a lot, a couple of weeks ago, right? We had our few calls, and I hadn't been in the program like two or three weeks, but we went out on a date before Christmas. And I was really emotional that night because she had been talking about wanting to move back to PA and stuff like that. And it really bothered me because it was in my mind, it's not about Valley Air. It's like, I don't want to break up my family. Like, in her mind, it's like, you just think this is easy and we'll just get 50 50 custody split. But I remember at dinner that night, I was like, I wasn't talking about that, but I just was, I was really in my feelings. I mean, I was really emotional with her in tears and I'm like I'll let's go like let's start over let's let's get out of Houston and move to Philly and we were really into it she was like for finally she was like you, you finally I, I see the lens that you are like the emotions but you know I, puking it is one thing though continually being pouty and puking those feelings and whining about it wasn't going to help but when you're honest and truthful like it wasn't a moment that helped her a little bit. I think realizing, like, holy shit, he's serious. So, you know. Well, yeah, and also, like, if you're patient, you're using curiosity, you're trying to understand exactly what she's saying, meaning you're not being defensive. This is what's allowing the facts to come out, right? And then we can let our feelings out, like G.S. Youngblood says in his book, right? Feelings first, facts later. Because we're going to always try to get to the facts, but we just need to understand them so that we can let those feelings out. Then when we show up, when you do share your feelings, right? She, she does. Most women do want you to be in tune with your feelings. It's just that we didn't know how. And if we did know what we were feeling, we didn't know how to communicate. A lot of women, same thing. I mean, you know, especially if there's a lot of emotions flowing. Just be patient. That's really the point. There shouldn't be a rush. You're talking about moving from Houston to Philly. That shouldn't be a rushed conversation anyways. But men want to fix it and have the answer. Before. Pardon me? Yeah. It's just one of those things where I, I realized the problem is, is that for me, or not that I'm unique, we, I had this dream in my head. And for the longest time, I think I manipulated her into believing that was her fucking dream. Mm. Being back in North Carolina, closer to my family, because she, I don't think, realized until later in life, until we had a kid, holy shit, she'd like to live closer to her family. Mm -hmm. And when she expressed that in like September, I blew up. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm in Philadelphia. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, I'm not living in a brownstone in a city. Like, I hate cold weather. Like, I'll be <laughs> like, like, I'll become a smuggler or some shit. I'll get out of here. But yeah, and it, it really, that caused a lot of angst. You know, that led us to attorneys. But again, 
it's only been a month and three days since I started doing this. And I'm already seeing that like, holy shit, just wait for like the next couple of months because yeah, anyway. It, it no, just it might I, be a reflect on what it was in September and what, October. Yeah, what a great, great outlook, man. And that's exactly right. When you do this right and you show up, just look out. It gets good. But most of the time, you're going to have, depending on what the issues are, you're going to potentially have a lot of that roller coaster. This is such a prime example because if you think about it, we all make plans. Kids is the easiest example that we have. Oh, yeah, we're going to have kids and then I'm going to do this and you're going to do that. And roles are defined and careers are going to be like this. Ceilings are going to go like this for careers. And all of a sudden, you're like later, the rug gets pulled out. You're like, well, I thought you wanted to be a stay at home mom. You know, like what the and you, like and it makes zero sense because the plans were made. But what a wonderful example here. All of a sudden, when she has kids and she realizes, fuck, it doesn't matter what we planned. I want my kids to be closer. Fuck, I just moved across Canada. Twice, because Catherine thought she wanted to have her family closer to the kids. Didn't work out when we got there. We tried again, didn't work out. But the thought was there because of the exact same thing. It's what we all inherently want. Like, it'd be so nice if our kids had the, their grandparents or whatever. And the grandparents wish they could be closer and all this. So it's funny because we can make all the plans in the world and somehow we forget that minds change, right? when it doesn't suit our needs. I don't like the cold in Philadelphia was the example, one of the examples you used, right? So funny, when you just go, shit, is, does that actually matter in the grand scheme no. of things? No. No, because it was, for me, I realized in this book, maybe it's crazy, my dad and I are best friends, and he lives in North Carolina. He's 78, I mean, I take this call every day, and whatever, he's been retired 20 years. For me, I think I realized, like, I never wanted to, do, I always wanted to impress my dad. <laughs> we so we all did. It's a nice guy thing. <laughs> being a member of a country club, having that member of guests, all these things I had as a kid, I, I realized, like, fuck, do I really want that? Like, I want it, but do I have to have it in North Carolina? I could have that in the suburbs of Philly. Like, I could play golf. Like, it, it took a lot of disruption to get here. That's what I'm saying. Well, just allow, okay. just allow yourself to kind of go through. That's part of your manic control. That's part of your nice guy. There's a deep needed seed to, to feed that it's like, oh my gosh, I wish my dad approved me or loved me. A lot of that comes from him not being around or not having the relationship that we wanted or not doing things right. There's, there's so many, that's a whole, we can have a whole lesson on that. But at the end of the day, it really has to go back to who am I? What do I want? Where am I going? You know? And you know, that's like when I talk about ownership, that's different than say Yako Willings, right? I want you to take extreme ownership, but also of what you guys planned and then lose the expectations as a man in control, not out of control. And understand, like we talked about a moment ago, goals can change, ideas can change, visions can change. The structure of how we get there and how we do it could be different. Like you just said, can golf here, can golf there, it doesn't fucking matter, right? But we tend to get stuck because we have the solution. As men, we fix. Now we have the solution. Now we're following the plan. And or we just don't even follow through because you have all this other mental shit going on. So anyways, Lance, I'm really, really impressed with just the thought process, the reflections. I was worried that day. And now look at you. Just the way you're, you're like, it's just, it's fantastic, man. Well done. Thanks. You got it.